Last summer, I took these laser cut blanks that I happen to have lying around, as you do, and decided to try turning them into resin needle minders. Try being the operative word there. After much enjoyable mess making, some of them kind of worked out okay, and some of them not so much. But anyway, I realised that wasn't going to be the best method for making my own needle minders, and I knew that one day I'd get time to try something else. Today is that day. Well, more accurately, it's been a really slow process over the last few months in between much more urgent jobs, but today's the day for the video. If you're new here, hello, my name is Michelle and I love to do all of the crafts, but especially the stitchy ones. On this channel, you'll find cross stitch, yarn crafts and sewing, but also videos like this one where I use any tenuous excuse to bring other crafts into the fold. It's totally allowed because we're making cross stitch related things. I'll link the old needle minder video up there somewhere and down in the description in case you'd like to check out my first attempt, but otherwise, let's get on. Here are the masters that I'm going to be working with, but before we get there, let me talk you through the plan a bit. Months ago, I had this vision of making resin needle minders with a line art design made of a second colour resin, rather than just painted on. In theory, I just needed some line art designs and to turn them into 3D models. So far, so good. And then it was time to print. All sounds nice and straightforward, yeah? All I'd have to do is load up the printer with my design, press the go button, and in a couple of hours I'd have my very own unique minder blanks. Well, about that. I'm still learning when it comes to 3D printing, and attempt one did not go well. The base shapes came out wonky, but another problem was that my line art was still apparently too thin and too detailed in places to print out accurately. So literally back to the drawing board for attempt two. I think these ones were maybe attempt four or five, and the first prints that actually worked as intended. Which brings us right back to this set of masters right here. First of all, the octopus. I don't know, it just reminds me of an octopus. A smaller, simple, solid shape that I think will be really fun to experiment with. A two-stage minder, basically I'll cast this frame shape as stage one and then fill the middle with a different colour, or a photo, or some kind of embed is the idea there. When printing out the line art minders, it became really apparent that this idea of pouring resin into the design is only going to work with really thick lines. For the intricacy of these two designs I made, painting is really going to be a better choice. But for the dwarvish type design, I did create a second version with much thicker lines, so I can at least try one with paint and another with resin. The resin plan was sound, I think, but it just needs a much simpler design. I'll try that at some point. <laughs> The next task then is to use these masters to make silicon moulds. However, before we can do that comes the really boring part. Clipping off the supports and sanding and polishing down to a smooth shiny surface. Basically, when you're casting moulds, the more effort you put into making your masters pristine and perfect, the less clean up and fixing you need to do on every single thing you go on to make with that mould. So it is worth taking some time over. I didn't care about the backs of these being perfect because they're going to make open top moulds, but I still needed to sand down the lumps and bumps left by the print supports so that silicon doesn't creep underneath them too much and make everything messy. As well as the prominent ridges from printing, there's a slight print defect on the edge of this solid one, so I had to take care to try and buff that out as much as possible. Also, I'm realising that I should have printed most of these out much thicker to make for easier sanding, but that's all a part of prototyping. We live and learn. We've got these, for want of a better term, mould moulds for making out dice moulds. The little one is for individual experiments or chunky d20s, and the big one is for full set slab moulds. In my case, I'm going to put the smaller solid minder into the little mould mould and the other four in here. This should just about fit. A mould making process in a nutshell is like so. Take a flat piece of perspex to use as a base. Tape some packing tape to it with more packing tape, because we're too lazy and cheap to find a better way. Place the master model on the sticky surface, making sure it's flat, and the mould too. And now comes the hot glue gun. Fun times. That one was easy enough, but I just want to point out that while we did get there in the end with this bigger one, didn't go quite so smoothly. Oh, I've got so much hair in that tip. <laughs> Help. <laughs> okay, once that's all securely sealed, it is time to add the silicone. There's a few possible points of failure coming up, but the one I'm really worried about right now is whether these patterns are large enough for the silicone to A, flow in and pick up all of that detail, and B, not just get stuck and snap off when I try and remove them from the mould. 
but it's going to take a full 24 hours in the pressure pot before we'll know either way, so fingers crossed. Now, I did have footage of them going into the pot, but it also included Dave using his bare man feet to grab things like a monkey, so I'm going to spare you that. Instead, I'll remind you that if you're enjoying this video, dropping it a thumbs up is really appreciated. It helps me out a lot. And if you're not subscribed, well, good for you, I guess. You're living life by your own rules. But also, if you do change your mind, the button is just down there. Time skip to the next day. All right, wish me luck because it's Sunday and this video is due out on Wednesday. And if this didn't work, I honestly do not have a backup plan. <laughs> Ripping all of yesterday's work off here is pretty satisfying, actually, and oh, look, ample evidence that I did not, in fact, manage to get the packing tape anywhere near flat. Now I'm just very carefully and lightly scoring around the edges wherever silicon has crept underneath the master, because we want these moulds to have a nice clean line around the edge to reduce cleanup on the final pieces. I forgot to mention earlier, I'd also liberally applied Vaseline around the edges of the mould moulds, so these pushed out pretty easily. Ooh. Unfortunately, the same didn't apply to the blanks themselves. It took ages to get them out because they'd formed a vacuum and also because I was really wary about yanking too hard and ripping off any delicate bits of silicon inside. Worth it though. Look at the detail. Oh, they're so pretty. Yes, when you're too far down the resin casting rabbit hole, you genuinely get excited for making the moulds as well. <laughs> Time to make some pretty First, we'll need some resin, and my plan is to divide this into four different colours to try different things in each minder. The octopus will use this funky shaved ice glitter and a single drop of teal ink. The first stage of the embed minder will be plain white. More on that tomorrow. The plan for the solid minder was to go halfy half white and purple, however it turns out we don't have any nice purple mica. I tried mixing this violet with some pink, but um... Oh. Oh dear. That was a bit of an incident. Long story short, it's mostly pink now. And finally, the dwarvish ones should be the same. Since I'm testing two different methods and every good scientist knows you only change one variable at a time. I'm going with this silver black mica powder there. Because I am a fantastic YouTuber, I managed to miss the record button and totally skip the first pour. But you can see here I'm basically going around with a pokey stick and making sure the resin has made it into that outer ring. One issue I noticed immediately here is that the increased depth of the pattern in this one, because I was trying to make it easier to pour resin into, means there's not room for very much resin on top, and I'm unsure how or even if that's going to work out. But we'll see. The glitter resin is super thick and gloopy. I would say look at the difference from the last one, but of course I failed to film the last one, so... Eh. And pouring the white embed frame is simple enough, but I realised I'd skimped a bit on the amount of white I mixed up, which is why I'm pouring bit by bit and guiding it into the edges, just to make sure I don't use more than needed. Finally then, I wanted to try the kiss pour technique that I keep seeing soap makers do, which it turns out is really hard to both film and have a good view of yourself at the same time. Basically, I'm pouring two colours and having them meet midstream. This actually made me really glad about the unintended pink. It looks exactly like raspberry ripple ice cream. Unfortunately, much like ice cream, five minutes later it had kind of melted. Back into the pot and another interminable wait to see what we've got. And finally, literally months of trying to get the designs to print out right and procrastinating doing the polishing has all led up to this moment. First thing I notice is that this one I was worried about being too thin has somehow got even worse. Somehow, even though the others seem like they cured flat, this one has obviously been on some kind of wonk. We're not used to casting things that need to be kept flat, so to be honest, this is probably just a bit of old resin or something stuck on the bottom of the pressure pot that we didn't notice. Lesson learned there. Let's demold Raspberry Ripple first. I have literally no idea what to expect from the other side of this, which is pretty exciting. Okay, this is like literally so far away from my initial plan, but also it's so pretty, oh my god. Obviously it's come out a bit matte and would need polishing up to be shiny like the back, but actually I might bring the back down to a matte effect instead, because I'm really wedded to the ice cream thing now, and I just think it looks way more realistic like that. Eee! Chuffed! All right, white frame. I need to be quite careful here because the resin has only been curing for about 24 hours, and this one is thin in the middle, so I don't want to bend it. Couple of bits of flashing on the back, but that's nothing a quick sand down won't fix. 
first of the dwarvish designs, this is the original one that I'm planning to paint. Oof, that is beautiful. You can see a few ridges where I got lazy on the polishing, but again, prototypes, and that's nothing that can't be fixed in post anyway. Oh, this one is absolutely stunning, honestly. Love it. The other one, though, yeah, that didn't make it. It was just too thin. In fact, watching this footage back, it's clear that it was broken before I even tried demolding it, but that wasn't as obvious in real life. I guess the pouring resin into a pattern in existing resin experiment will just have to wait. And finally, our glittery octopus baby. I was a bit nervous that the glitter might have all settled to the bottom or poked out of the resin or caused a bubble void or something, but it seems to have worked out fine. The main issue with this one is going to be how see-through it is. Sticking a magnet on the back might ruin the vibe a bit. Hmm. So, two to paint, one is done. That one was going to get a resin pour, but alas, which just leaves us with this one. As I said earlier, you could put anything in here. A photo was the original idea, or even just a pore effect like the Raspberry Ripple. But then I got the idea of embeds, and specifically, yeah, I brought my art jar. Now the disclaimer here is that I genuinely have no idea if this will work or look good or anything, but science. I'm just putting a few threads to see what a more minimal version looks like and to make sure it works. But if it does, I'll probably try a more packed version next time. This could be such a fun souvenir of a project. Okay, here goes nothing. Just need to make sure the threads are all in that inside circle. I expect some of them will stick up through the surface, but I can deal with that later. There, tucked away in the pressure pot with yet more dice moulds, and that is that. So since I was doing a second pour on that one minder anyway, I decided to do further experiments with the rest of the moulds too. But before we get into the specifics, let's have a look at how everything turned out, shall we? All in all, a pretty successful experiment. There are definitely a couple of things I'll need to change for next time. For example, I will make those masters a lot thicker than the final minders will be, just because I think that's going to make it easier to create the moulds. Also, because the original plan was to fill the line art with resin, those lines are very deep in these ones, which didn't work out well for painting. You'll see there are tiny gaps in the paint finish. I'll go over those again probably after I've filmed, just to fill in the last few gaps, but yeah, that was a bit of a nightmare. Obviously this is a really easy fix, next time I'll know in advance that they're going to be painted instead of poured into, so there will be the appropriate depth. There were a couple of failures. First of all, the Oort Embed. Now, the reason I went with the white background is because I was slightly worried that the floss colours might bleed, so it's a success in the sense that that has not happened. However, having that stark white background does make it all just look a little bit too minimal. The idea was sound though, I'm looking forward to experimenting more with this, putting different things in, loading it up with more floss, using different effects, there's all kinds of things you could do with this mould. One other experiment I did was to cast the octopus and dwarvish design in the same colour, so that I could ink them differently and just see what that kind of did to the whole vibe. I chose a mica colour at random that we'd never used before, and to be honest, the result is basically just more raspberry but without the ripple. Unfortunately for this one, I decided to try and ink it in this copper paint, and as you can see there, it did not go well. The paint was just so gloopy, it left so many holes, it wouldn't settle into the gaps. Obviously, again, this would be much easier if the line art was much shallower, but for these purposes, it just didn't work. And also, I'm not sure I would have liked that colour combo anyway, even if it had worked. By comparison, the octopus version, cast in the same colour, quite pretty. I inked this in a pale pink. Again, it hasn't got the best coverage, but again, that's just a function of the 2D marks. I think it's pretty cute. This one here was a total experiment based on how much I loved the glittery octopus baby, and I wasn't sure it was going to work. Basically, because the glitter resin is so thick, I thought maybe it would create a nice barrier and not mix the two too much, and as you can see, that worked really well. It's definitely in the running for my favourite. Not to discount Raspberry Ripple though, I actually really love how that turned out, and if you imagine that in a kind of grey-blue colour, it would look exactly like the moon. I think that would be really cool. What do you reckon then? 
massive success, unmitigated disaster, way too much effort just to come out of it with, what, five usable needle minders? Well, you're not wrong about that last part, but of course the idea is once I have my masters and moulds dialed in, the actual resin pouring process is pretty simple. I've been really inspired lately by some people I follow, at least one of whom is probably watching this right now, just taking the leap, designing products and putting themselves out there. It's something I've always wanted to try and just kind of been terrified. So yes, once I get this process down, I would definitely like to try selling a few needle minders. Obviously there's a bit of quality control to do before then, but I think I can see the end in sight. Don't worry, I'm not planning to start shilling my stuff at you at every opportunity. I just need to afford bills, and I'm pretty sure the type of people who watch my channel aren't going to begrudge me for trying. Alright, let me know which minder was your favourite down in the comments. I'll see you soon for some more crafty nonsense, so in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day, and keep making cool stuff. Bye!